Welcome to our next video on ratios. Here we're going to be looking specifically at how a technique called substitution can help us solve a ratio. So let's get started. Um, first we should make up our ratio. Maybe we're at a restaurant and there is some kind of survey or there's a survey done in a chain of restaurants and what we found was that there was a ratio of 4 to 5, right? And that can mean anything, of course, but let's say that this represents four people who prefer to drink tea for every five that prefer to drink coffee. Now, we don't know how many people yet are in the restaurant. We just know that the ratio of people who drink tea to coffee is, is four to five. And, and one observation you should be making right away is that, well, if there's four people that drink tea and five that drink coffee, altogether we have four plus five or nine people in this group. And that number nine is, is something that's going to help us out in our ratio. So one thing you might want to always do when you're looking at a ratio, as long as it's a part to a part, in other words, you know, tea and coffee, it's not a fraction the, the, in the sense where the tea is out of the coffee. They're separate things, right? Tea and coffee are separate groups, separate parts. When that happens, you can add them up to count the total. Well, here we can ask a question. We can say, well, what if there are... Um, I don't know, 990 people in this restaurant chain that were surveyed. So we total, we surveyed a total of 990 people. So the questions, you know, you usually might get from this is if you know how many people were surveyed and you know the ratio of, of tea to, to coffee drinkers, um, you're at, you'll usually be asked to figure out, well, than how many total people drink tea and coffee in these restaurants. Now one immediate thing that might jump out at you is to use this number right here, the number nine, and which means that the number within this total ratio group right here, and figure out how many times it goes into the total, right? To do 990 divided by nine. And what's that? Well, I know nine times 100 is 900. And I know that nine times 10 is 90. And this helps me here because together, 9 times 100 and 9 times 10 is 990. So that means that this answer is 110. So the, so the groups of 9 fit into this total survey group 110 times, which means that our ratio, if you want to understand how it works in the entire restaurant, right? we're not going to say it's 4 people that drink tea and coffee, but much more than that. Right? We're going to have 4 times 110 people that drink tea and 5 times 110 people that drink coffee. So what's 4 times 110? Well, that's, that's 440. And what's 5 times 110? It's 550. And, you know, this balances out because if we were to add these two up, 440 and, and 550, we would get 990. So this process of scaling a ratio is very intuitive and very useful. But we want to have other techniques. And you know, as we work further in this, we'll be presented with a lot of complex problems that require us to have the flexibility of using this technique of substitution. So let's talk about that technique, because really all I've been talking about so far is kind of an intuitive way to approach this problem. Um, so the ratio of t to coffee can be written as a fraction. And it doesn't change anything, it's still the same ratio, it is written a different way. And we know that that equals 4 to 5. So in this problem, right, we're asked to solve, well, how many people, how many people altogether, right, drink tea and coffee in a restaurant of 990? So we want to set up a ratio and solve for x and, and actually, and actually use substitution to do that in order to make sense of what's happening. So here's the next step. We know that the number of people that drink tea and coffee equals 990. So I'm setting up a separate equation, right? Our first equation is right here, just setting up the ratio. And the second equation is right here, setting up the total. Substitution generally combines two or more equations in terms of the variables we have. Our variables here are tea and coffee. So what I'm going to do is rewrite the T in terms of the coffee. And to do that, all I have to do is say that the amount of people drinking tea is equal to the total number of people minus the people who drink coffee. 
right? I just kind of subtracted coffee from both sides here. So T is really all of the people in the restaurants minus the people who drink coffee. And that makes sense, right? Because in this survey, I guess we're assuming either you drink tea or coffee, one or the other. So if you don't drink, if you do not drink tea, you drink coffee. And the reverse is true. If you take away all the people, if you take away all the people that drink coffee, what's left are the tea drinkers. That being said, this can now be substituted or plugged into our first ratio right here. And then we can solve. Here's how it looks. We would have 990 minus, I'll put C now for coffee. That will be on our numerator. And actually, I'm running out of room if I write over there. Um, I'll write a little bit over more. 990 minus C. I'm going to put that's, I'm putting that basically right here. Right? That's going to be over C, coffee. And we know this equals 4 over 5. So all I'm doing is substituting. And what's really nice right now, by substituting, instead of having T and coffee as variables, two variables, I now have one variable. And I can solve this. I would solve it, multiply both sides by C, right? These C's cancel out, C divided by C. This C over here is going to stay. And now my formula says 990 minus C equals, this is just four-fifths C. And I want to solve, so I'm going to add C to both sides. And I get 990 because this goes away, cancels out, they're additive inverses. And here I get, well, this is one C and, and four-fifths of a C. You can think of that as, as five-fifths and four-fifths, or nine-fifths C equals 990. And that doesn't look like it's very helpful, but let's solve this. Let's solve for C. And I'm going to write, I guess, over here. Sorry, I'm running out of room. So 990, let's move that over, 990 equals 9 over 5 C. How do we solve? Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 9 fifths. And that's just going to help me out because what it ends up doing, right, 5 ninths is the reciprocal. I just switch the numerator and denominator. But when I multiply these fractions, it's going to be 9 times 5 over 5 times 9. Or 9 times 5, really over 9 times 5, and that's just 1. So these cancel out. And we're left with C equals this over here. Now this looks intimidating, but, but one important thing to realize is that you can look at how many times 9 goes into 990 before you multiply it by 5, because you might be tempted to do 5 times 990 divided by 9. But that effect is extra work. 9 goes really nicely into 990. We talked about that before. I think it's right down here. 9 goes into 990 110 times. So that cancels out. So does that. We write 110. But we still have that 5 to deal with, right? And the coffee is equal to this, which is 5 times 110 or 550. And look at that. We get the same result as before. Now this might seem like a real long and complicated process. And at first, it is going to feel that way. That's how substitution always feels at the beginning. But this is a powerful concept. We have two variables. And to solve it, and you'll see problems later where it's really difficult to, to solve without substitution. But to solve it here, we turned one of the variables, the t, into an equation in terms of coffee right here. So we got rid of the variable t and plugged in coffee and we could solve for what's happening right here. Understanding this gives us a lot of flexibility. And sometimes what will happen when, when you're setting all this up is you can use even techniques of cross multiplication, all kinds of things because you're never sure exactly what part will be missing. Anyway, that's a good start for us, ratios and substitution. I hope that helped.